We'll bring this meeting to order with the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So this should be relatively quick. We've got a contract to approve a multi-purpose vehicle for elections and registration. Jessica? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to just run us through it real quick for the record. Okay, so we are looking at purchasing the 2019 Ford Transit with the StarCraft body from Midwest Transit Equipment for the price of $58,900. Chris, could you say 2014? 19. 19. <clears throat> Have you figured out? Um, how you're going to use that exactly? Yet, or use yourself? Or yeah, we're going to use it if, um, for a variety of purposes for delivering early vote equipment and also hauling equipment back and forth to classes, and then for get out the vote outreach, for voter registration drives, um, actually going and doing mobile voting. So we'll go to different locations and that do not have an early vote site and be able to give them the opportunity to walk to a polling location on a day other than Election Day. Um, and then we're also going to use it for absentee voting. Um, currently, what happens is the early vote workers will work from uh, 8.30 to 3.30, and then they'll come back once or twice a week, depending on volume, and reconcile and alphabetize all of their ballots, which at the end of the day can be kind of brain taxing. Uh, you've already worked all day, and now you have to stay later, um, and you're also being transported in personal vehicles. So um, if you and your partner come and you're there till 6 o'clock, then you also have to drive, all, drive your partner all the way back to your original location. Right. So you know there's no detouring for dinner or going to the grocery store. You have to drop the other person back off. So this group of people will have, or the vehicle, will have a Democrat and a Republican and drive to all the early vote sites, pick up all the boxes, deliver all new boxes, come back to the administration building, and then it will be the same two people reconciling yeah. every day. So it will save on overtime yeah. and also on um, – it will make employees a little bit happier because <laughs> they don't have as late of nights, especially with the extension of early vote hours. How, How are you doing, doing that now? Currently, um, once or twice a week, the early vote themselves, <laughs> themselves would drive back. And then they'd have to reconcile and then go all the way back. So like so the people that are working in Hebron – are driving in the same vehicle because you can't have the ballots and just like on election day, they're coming from Hebron in the same vehicle all the way to Valpo. They're reconciling the, you know, 100 or 200,000 whatever ballots they had for the week. Um, and then they're driving back to Hebron to their vehicles. And then like the one lady that works Hebron is super nice because she lives in Ogden Dunes. Okay. So she's driving from Hebron to Ogden Dunes home after she gets done at 8 o'clock at night reconciling, so. And then I be back at 8.30. <laughs> so this will save on that, and it will hopefully save on just help us with the efficiency um, because, like Jessica said, when you're staring at those little letters at 6 o'clock at night after working from 8.30 to 3.30 and then driving, sometimes a B looks like a D and vice versa, so. Have you looked at just a, a van? Uh, the van wouldn't fit the purpose of transporting the equipment. So previously for the equipment, we'd have to borrow the coroner's van, and even with, you'd take the gurney out, store the gurney, and then you'd um, have to lay the equipment down, and laying the equipment down is not what's best for the computers inside of it. And, and how are we transporting them now? We rented um, a, like a budget truck kind of like thing, um, and we'd have to keep renting it because we go to, for the classes and for early voting. So for early voting, we rented it and then delivered to each of the places. And then for the classes, we spent one for each week because we're in different locations each week to deliver it to each of the locations each week back and forth. Have you spoke to anyone that is currently using a vehicle of this type? For? For early voting. I mean, I mean the transporting seems 
seems. The transporting, um, no, it's just more efficient for us to be able to right. transport and better for the equipment. Um, the other places around the country that do it for mobile boating, they typically use a single wide trailer, and so its only purpose is for early boating. They can't use it to haul equipment. So a lot of other people, after we told them what our idea is, they're looking at doing it differently as well because if you can get more purposes out of one vehicle, why not do it? And the nice thing with this new one, since we couldn't get, you know, we were looked at it previously, so he brought us this new chassis. It has a rear entrance door on it. The other one just had the rear exit window kind of emergency thing. This one has a rear entrance double wide door, so we'll be able to put, you know, like the tractor ramps on it to haul the equipment into it instead of having to take it up the wheelchair ramp. So that's really did, nice. Did you discuss? Did you discuss this idea with the council mm -hmm. during budget time? Um, I had it on my budget, and then I removed it from my budget because I had enough excess funds in the 2019 budget. And then um, after they needed some more information, so then that those funds reverted back to the general fund. So then I went before them again and got a transfer of funds in January. So this is coming out of your budget? Yes. This is going to what? I didn't hear you. Come out of their budget. Yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm just a, a little concerned about, you know, we're less than 60 days into our new budget. And and then coming before the, the council and the board of commissioners for an additional of over what amounts to about, what, $60,000, $65,000 with no, reoccurring. We asked for a transfer currently. We're hoping to not have to go back for a additional. Um, there, the possibility is there. And the council did approve it already. Yes, mm -hmm. the council already approved it. When we started the process, it would have not been an additional or a, it, wouldn't it would have been completely covered our budget at the end of last year. Plus, of all the money that we gave back last year. Mm -hmm. Well, I, you know, technically, giving that money back, I mean, less than 24 months ago, I mean, our county spent over a million dollars for new equipment for voters' registration, as we all know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, is, that is another concern of mine. And the other concern is, you know, we're on the precipice of coming into a, a general election that may be larger than any of us has, has ever seen, mm -hmm. and plugging in a new piece of technology into that. Uh, I mean, I'm still, I have to be honest with you, I'm still there's parts of me still raw over what happened, you know, two years ago. That, to no fault of yours, Jessica, but it, it's, uh, or even you, Sunday. I'm just saying, it it happened, and we had to deal with it, and it, you know, and, and it has cost our our own office here. Um, of, of, you know, we've had to to put that burden on more than one of our employees to deal with. Uh, with no additional compensation. Well, and I understand that, and, but part of the problem in 2018 was the absentee ballot, and we've streamlined that process partially through state code by mandating a central count, so the ballots don't go out to the polls, but another step with the absentees is we still get them. They still have to be alphabetized by precinct and stored in a very specific way. In order to do this way, we would have two people's hands on them instead of having 10 people's hands on them. And we would have two people that their sole job is to process the absentee ballot and go get them from the early vote locations and process them and go through that whole route instead yeah. of having overworked employees coming back. And, and honestly, we're hoping with this mobile voting, it will take some of the stress off of the other election day and early voting sites by offering more options um, out in the county, like in Burns Harbor, so in South Haven and in Coutts and stuff, where we don't already have early voting sites. Um, so that way, on election day, they're not getting overwhelmed at the polls. Um, that they're not getting overwhelmed at the early voting sites. I'm sure you guys were all here in 2016 and 2012 and 2008 when they were wrapped around the building because early voting was so um, popular, and it just it keeps increasing. Our numbers um, and if, and if percentages it, if it keep, keep increasing with early voting. If if that be the case, 
and this is something else I don't understand, mm -hmm. we, we just consolidated our voting locations. So if we're consolidating our voting locations, why are we investing this much money into a mobile site to address sites that, that don't, for whatever reason, um, that you believe don't have the same opportunity or access to vote as other sites. Because, well, then you're basically you're staffing someplace for 30 days. So if you're talking about staffing three satellite voting locations for 30 days, you're going to spend that plus. Well, I think we and might, this one will I travel think we might to be mixing a few different things here. Locations. On, if we're talking about so this, to be clear, we're not adding any. We're not, we're not adding any computers, we're not adding any new systems, we're, we're, this is just the van, mm -hmm. right? Correct. The van that we're going to put our stuff that we already have in mm -hmm. to move around, that's mm -hmm. one idea. And the other idea is that we can do mobile voting out of it. Mm -hmm. So, Sunday to your comment, I, so the early voting for, it's not so much that <coughs> if we have, because we have, right now without mobile voting, we have how many early voting Five. sites? Five. Five. So is the idea that if one of those sites happens to be overflowing with people, that we can position this somewhere close by to we'll try to alleviate some of that pressure off of that site during early voting? Not off of that site, but pulling people off of, like the people so from Burns Harbor instead of driving from Burns Harbor to Chesterton can vote in Burns Harbor, or the people from Cowes instead of driving to Hebron to have to early vote can vote so at Cowes. we were on election day. Mm -hmm. well, and then or on, on election day. I think part of what um, Commissioner Biggs is talking about is that we just recently consolidated a couple locations for Election Day. With mm -hmm. that being two of them were, um, one was a, is a mobile home park, they're losing their community building, it's being demolished, there's nothing we can do. If they can't vote in their community building, they have to go somewhere else and vote. However, some of those people may be mobility challenged. So we've just taken away their ability to go to their polling location on Election Day. We would like to give that back as one of our mobile voting sites and go there for a couple hours, three to four hours on like a Wednesday or Thursday evening. That way those people still have the ability to walk to their polling location. It's no fault of their own that their community building is being demolished. Another apartment complex um, through state code, you now have to sign that the equipment was delivered. They absolutely, with their management contract, refuse to sign that paper. We can't put equipment there if they're not going to sign the paperwork. So now they're location was moved to Emanuel Lutheran. So we would like to go there a couple hours during the week and give them the ability to walk to their polling location as they've always done without their management having to sign any paperwork. So we would be giving back to them what through no fault of their own had to be taken away. It's just, if there's not one use for this vehicle. It can definitely grow with the county. It's not something that okay, we're going to be using it for this and this alone. Like, this isn't a one-stop. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is, and we're going to use this. It's going to haul our equipment to the early voting sites and it's going to take it to classes and pick up absentee and that's it. And then it's going to sit for, you know, 364 other days. To me, this is it's a piece of the puzzle to avoiding some of the problems we've had in the past. And I think it's really going to increase efficiency. And I'm, honestly, I'm hoping it will increase voter turnout because we and that too, do that's have... Importantly. I mean, it's actually kind of sad. Yeah. Well, Anything we can do to increase voter turnout. I mean, my, I, I agree with you. I mean, but I think that the solutions that we have to increase voter turnout are, already exist. Uh, but people have to be willing to, to utilize those opportunities, and they're not doing that. To me, I mean, this, you know, I, I think you, you, you make a, a very strong case. But it, to me, it just it just seems like this is a technical solution in search of a problem. I just don't. I, I you know, I think you're doing a wonderful job as clerk, and I and and I appreciate the job that voters registration is doing, especially over the last 24 months. I think you guys are making a big difference. But we're like I. I, I I touched on earlier, I think that we're on the precipice of one of the largest general elections that this county has seen in a long time. And I just, I am not comfortable at this point in plugging in another, you know, form of technology into it. Um, let's just, you know, 
let's take what we've been given, uh, you know, what we've invested, you know, over a million dollars uh, in technology and, and use it the best we can with what we have right now. I'm sorry. I don't agree. I'm going to go ahead and make a motion just to put out there. Um, I motion to approve the purchase of the, the election van for 58900 I, I think anything we can do to move forward and increase voter participation and, and efficiency and avoid the problems we've had in the past, we should try to do. And there are other uses for this van that you pointed out that make a lot of sense to me. I appreciate everybody's opinion. It's just... This is just mine. Motion is going to die. Sorry. Thank you. Are there any other matters to come before the commissioners? Today? Okay. Meetings in recess.